I first started working on instruments when I was aged about 11. My father bought me a banjo lin. I found that I enjoyed cleaning it more than I did actually playing it. And I think that's where my love of taking instruments apart and putting them back together again, I think that's where it came from. My name is Michael Phoenix and I was born and raised in Kirkdale, which is a dock area of Liverpool. And I am now the resident violin and bow maker and restorer at the Blue Coat. What sets my instruments apart from other makers is that I make totally in the style of Antoni Stradivari, so I don't use any power tools or electricity when I make new instruments. So I would use hand tools only, and when the light fails, I would use candlelight. Working in candlelight shows the imperfections, bumps and troughs clearly on an instrument, like the craters on the moon. It's very calming. It can be kinder on the eyes and easier to concentrate, as everything else in the room is in darkness. Every instrument I make is unique and quite often the customer might want something different about their instrument. Um, last year I made an instrument for somebody who went to Oxford University and it was the first time leaving home. And so inside the instrument I put a lock of hair from the father, the mother and the sister and the two brothers so that when the student took the instrument away with them to university they didn't feel as though they were on their own. I think anybody who doesn't play a musical instrument is really, really missing out. It's, it's a way of thinking outside the box. It's a way of being able to express your emotions. Uh, for a little example of that is my daughter, when she was four, a uh, hamster died. When we told her what had happened and she seen the hamster, she, she sort of accepted it and went upstairs. And I said, oh, she's going upstairs to have a cry. And we heard a violin, because she started playing violin age three. So at age four, she was expression, uh, expressing her emotions on a musical instrument. I've got four children who play violin and uh, I've made instruments for two of them and, and two, two of the children I'm still making instruments for. When I'm working on them instruments, I, I can't help but think of, of my kids as I make the instruments and, and in that way they're made uh, purely with love. People often ask me what it's like to play a Stradivari. Well, the one that I had in the workshop uh, last year, um, I actually didn't play it at all uh, because, you see, I'm a, I'm a maker, not a player. And its beauty and excellence to me is the way in which it's made and the sound is more or less a byproduct. If you were to ask me, does it fascinate me that my instruments may be played in hundreds of years from now? I think I'd say, well, these days we tend to concern ourselves with our own lifespan. And the likes of the Victorians didn't do that so much. They'd plant 
fantastic gardens knowing that there would be no chance that they'd see the fruit of their labours in their lifetime. Maybe we've lost some of that unselfish legacy. All that concerns me is that the instruments are made well enough to last the journey and that the craftsmanship is good enough to warrant future repairers to give the instrument some respect and repair it correctly, hence extending its life.